Togosa. Thank you. Welcome to Togosa. Praise the Lord. Abundant life, I said, praise the Lord. Today, the crusade begins in Lume, Togo. And all over the world, there's going to be miracle, salvation, change of life, eternal life, abundant life, joy, healing, blind eyes will open. The lame will rise up and walk. Supernatural power from heaven will come upon your life. Today, you will give your testimony. Father, we well, thank you. We well, bless your name. What a great, mighty God you are. And you have brought us to Togo at this time. So that power from heaven. Miracle from heaven. Supernatural things you will do from heaven. Prodigious things that will do. We are asking Lord that today. You begin the manifestation in every life. And I pray during the message. Your word will enter every heart. Turn every life around. And then the power for miracle will de be, be deposited in every life. And everyone here will be connected with that abundant life. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name, I pray. God bless everyone. You can sit down. Tonight, today's first day. Be expectant. While you are hearing the message, be prepared. Because something good is going to happen in your life. I'm going to take the message from John chapter 10. And we're reading from verse 9. John chapter 10. We're reading from verse 9. It says, I am the door. When you are going to enter into any building, there is a door. When you are going to enter into any supermarket to get anything, there is a door. And as you come, and you are going to enter into the abundant life, blessings of God, the door is Jesus Christ. That's why it says, I am the door. He didn't say, I was the door. He didn't say, I will be the door. Today, in your life, today, in your family, today, as you are seeking for the blessing of God, Jesus is the door. It's the door to salvation. It's the door to forgiveness. Is the door to freedom? Is the door to eternal life? Is the door to miracle? Is the door to healing? Is the door to the supernatural? Now, when you want to enter a door, whether you are young or you are older, you are a man or you are a woman very easy for everyone look at the door see the door open 
and then you enter and i'm telling you tonight you will enter you'll enter and find salvation you'll enter and find abundant life you'll enter into miracle remember remember i am the door by me if any man enter in jesus said by him and him alone and he says any man can enter you will enter you will enter if any man enter in he shall be saved salvation comes to you today and as you enter you will be saved tonight and you shall go in and out and find a pasture everything you are seeking for tonight you will find look at verse, verse 10 it says the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy then you said i am come yes come jesus savior lord the one that has all power on earth and in heaven he has come he has come to you in lume right now all over the world anywhere you are christ the savior is come he said i am come that they might have life he wants you to have life eternal life abundant life and then he said that they may have it more abundantly that's why i swore here tonight there is no shadow of doubt in my heart you will have life eternal life abundant life you will have the life of christ in you tonight he says i am come that they not only one person they all of us over there that they all of us in the media that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly and then in verse 11 it says i am the good shepherd the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep that's what we are talking about tonight divine provision for everyone's abundant life Christ has made a provision for you, for me, for us, for everyone. Divine provision for everyone's abundant life. I'm going to explain to you in three points. One, two, three, prayer, final amen miracle in your life <laughs> number one he's coming with abundant life that's what that's what he just told us i am come that they might have life number one he's coming with abundant life why did he come because there was the thief that sucked in everybody and he put everyone in a cage 
And when you put a bird, a chicken, when you put them in a cage, You want to, when you are hungry, you want to take them out of the cage, slaughter them, kill them, eat them up. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. That's, that's the devil. He put everyone in a cage. He stole our hearts, our life from God. And we yielded surrender unto him. And he put everyone in a cage. So that the life of everyone in the cage will be abated, aborted, destroyed. And then somebody it from the hands of God, it becomes a nobody in the hands of Satan. The cage of the abated life. But thank God Christ has come. And as Christ comes, he calls us. And when you respond to the call, you come out of the cage of Satan. You come out of the cage of evil spirit. You come out of the cage of demonic power. And then Christ brings you to himself. As you come tonight, everything the devil has done in your life, Christ will cancel. Number three is called to the abounding life. When the world calls you, they call you into trouble. When Satan calls you, he calls you to destruction. When a secret cult calls you, they call you into bondage. But there is just one call. The call by Christ will bring you to the abounding life. Congratulations tonight. Because you come into Christ's abounding life tonight in Jesus' name. Number one is coming with abundant life. Christ has come and he comes with abundant life. Look at John chapter 10 again and look at verse 10. In the middle there he says, I am come that they might have life. There's a kind of life that the world cannot give. Eternal life happy life righteous life a release life a life from heaven the life like the life of christ the life that takes every negative thing and takes judgment away from your life the life from heaven the kind of life that the world cannot give the kind of joy that the world cannot give. The kind of victory that the world cannot give. The life of power that the world cannot give. Anywhere you go in the world and you want a life of victory, a life of happiness, a life of joy, a life that is fulfilled a life that is accomplished the world cannot give that but christ said i am calm i am calm today you are going to have new life the life you've been dreaming about can i be like that can i be like that 
the only one that can give you that kind of life jesus christ our lord and savior he says i am come that they might have life and they after giving you that initial salvation and he gives you that eternal life and he gives you that change of life because once you come to christ you become a new creature with a new life old things are passed away and all things become new a new joy a new happiness a new victory a new dream a new desire a new achievement if any man be in christ he is a new creature old things are passed away all suffering passed away all sickness passed away old evil passed away and then he says when you have life don't stop there there is still the more abundant life we get saved we also get sanctified more abundant life we get healed we also have health more abundant life we have the initial conversion and then we have a higher conduct in life we have life we have the more abundant life tonight it's all available for you because he came I want you to look at First Timothy chapter 1 verse 15 in First Timothy chapter 1 reading from verse 15 he said this is a faithful saying this is a saying full of faith this is a faithful saying this is an expected saying for everyone it says and it is worthy of all acceptation it says this saying now is the normal saying everybody should accept acceptation all acceptation that everyone everywhere should accept this that everyone here Lume here you are hearing me now everyone in our country everyone in our continent everyone everywhere accept this And he says, it's a faithful saying. That word faithful is connected with God. God, the faithful God. That word faithful is connected with Christ. He said, I am the amen and the faithful. He said, this, this faithful saying extends to the very nature and the life of God. And then everyone should accept this. Anyone who believes in God, anyone that knows that God is, anyone that knows that Christ will never fail, that Jesus Christ the same yesterday today and forever should accept this saying faithful like you accept Christ what is the saying that extends to the very life of God 
that remains and abides as long as God lives that remains and abides as long as Christ lives this is a saying that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners some people say I cannot come to Christ now I'm terrible as a sinner that's not good reasoning Christ came to save sinners he came because of you he came because of her he came because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God Christ came for you say Christ came for me say it again if you are deep in the well of sin if all your life from head to toe had been poisoned and polluted by sin if your language is the language of sin if your action is the action of sin if your life is full of evil life is full of evil Christ came because of you you know those people you know those people that say when I become better I will come to Christ they are like people who say I am sick I cannot go to the doctor now when I become better I'll go to the doctor even your little child will say you mama how are you saying that even your little boy will say papa how can you say that it is when you are sick you go to the doctor when not when you are well and become better then you go to the doctor no Why, why you are still a sinner and you feel the guilt and you feel the condemnation and you feel the pain of what you have done and you experience the bondage of your sin that is when you come to Christ because this is a faithful saying and it is worthy of all acceptation that everybody all should accept that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners somebody said I am ignorant I know nothing when I improve when I improve and I have knowledge then I will go to school everybody will say but no when you know nothing when you are ignorant when you have no knowledge that's the time to go to so, school don't say i'll become better i'll turn over a new leaf i'll make myself righteous i will do this and do this and do that become a good boy a good girl a good man a good woman then i will go to christ no 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 as you are a sinner dirty 
a sinner guilty a sinner in the well of sin christ jesus came into the world to save sinners and then paul the apostle said of whom i am chief oh some some leaders of groups of sinners they say i want salvation but i cannot be saved because i am the head of the gang i am the leader of the sinner i am corrupting i am the one corrupting other people to become evil and sinful so they say my subordinates can go the little little ones can go but i i'm the head i'm the chief i'm the director i am the sponsor of those bad people so i cannot come you can come christ came for everyone and paul the apostle said of whom i am chief and yet he came so you come he comes and she comes and whosoever comes to him he will in no wise reject you are coming i said you are coming for salvation you are coming for deliverance you are coming for eternal life you are coming for a new life in Christ you are coming he is coming with abundant life you will get it today am I talking to somebody there where are you you will have eternal life tonight in Jesus name Hey, look at look at my point number two here the cage of the abated life now there is another personality he doesn't have freedom he doesn't have life he's connected with death and sorrow and suffering And that's why Jesus said, The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. Everyone Satan wants to destroy, he puts inside the cage. And when he puts them inside the cage, he goes up and down he goes to and fro on the whole earth to search for other captives he will put in the cage and because he has put them in the cage and he wants to go away from that cage to look for other people to put in the cage he has to lock the cage so that those captives so that those people with aborted lives abated lives they will not go out of the cage before he brings all the others into the cage and when satan locks the door is the leader the head the master of all the demons is the master of all the sinners 
and satan doesn't give his spare key to any demon he doesn't give his spare key to any man he takes the master key away while he's looking for other people to bring in the only one who can open that cage in his presence or in his absence is the lord jesus christ is the, is the one that said i have the key of death and hell and so jesus only is the one that can open that cage whether the devil is there looking or the devil is not there absent jesus has the key to open that cage for you tonight look look at proverbs chapter 5 verse 22 In Proverbs chapter 5, verse 22. His own iniquity shall take the wicked himself. And he shall be holding, shall be held, shall be bound, shall be tied up with the cords of his sin. when the devil takes a man or takes a woman the sin in your life the evil in your life the dirty dirty things in your life the, the things that the devil makes into a cord and then ties your hand ties your feet ties your mind ties everything in your life and then when you are tied by the cords of your own sin he puts you into the cage that the reason christ and christ alone the one who can untie and lose the cord and when jesus says yes in your life no demon no devil can say no because why losing that person over there tied to the pole jesus said if anybody asks you that question if any demon asks that question if any satan any devil asks that question just say the lord has need of him tonight the lord has need of you he wants to pour into your life abundant life he wants to pour into your life eternal life he wants to point to you heavenly life you're welcome you're welcome say i will come and the lord and the lord will receive you in revelation chapter 18 Revelation chapter 18, I'm looking at verse 2. Revelation chapter 18, verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is falling, is falling. And it's become the habitation of devils. And the hold of every foul spirit. Look at this. And a cage, a cage, a cage of every unclean and hateful bird.
Babylon. The whole of Babylon. From the head to the toe. Babylon. In the day, in the night. Babylon. At that time, at this time. Is a cage. And all the people of the world. Because of the courts of their sins that bound them. Babylon has become a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And that Babylon is falling. The falling world. The falling people. The evil sinful people. They all belong to that cage. And there's only one name from heaven given among men that can open that cage, that can set free every captive there. Jesus, the Savior, the healer, the deliverer, the redeemer. You come out of the cage tonight. I said you will come out of the cage tonight. Galatians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 19. In Galatians chapter 5 verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. What are the things people do that brings them into that cage of the devil? And anyone in that cage will have an aborted life. Life will not be as exciting as it should be. As happy as it should be. As joyful as it shall be. When the life is aborted and abated. Life will not have the quality of life it ought to have. What are those things people do that makes them have aborted life, abated life? now now in this world at this time at the present time not for the not the, for the olden days even at the time in which we live what are the things that abates people's lives aborts people's lives Look at them, look at them, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Look at verse 20, idolatry, idolatry. When somebody goes to a shrine, to the forest, or maybe in your home, you have a corner there, you make a shrine, and you're worshipping idol, you're going to have an aborted life. <laughs> and then it talks about witchcraft. Aborted life. Hatred. Aborted life. Variance. Emulations. Wrath, strife, anger, fighting, violence. You have a bitter, aborted life. Seditions, heresies. Then in verse 21, envies and murders and drunkenness. Rebellions and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I also have told you in time past, that 
they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, that's where you have abundant life. The kingdom of God, that's your heart. That's where you have abounding life. And those who do not enter into the kingdom of God, they have a bottled life, a bated life. But today, we're going to make a transfer. The Lord will transfer you out of that useless life and bring you into the abundant life tonight in Jesus' name. Many, many years ago, I was going to a particular school. And it was just, just like going to school. There wasn't real education there. There wasn't any progress there. Nobody passed out of that school and then comes to live a good life for an employed life, an employable life. We well, were just there. As a young boy, I loved the school. Why? A, a lot of play. A lot of you seen uh, color water, uh, color water or something to paint and all. I loved it. But, but my father saw that if I continue in that school, I'll be nobody here in the world. And he looked. He looked for a school where they had real teaching, learning. And he took me out of that school. I said, why? My friends are there. The watercolor for coloring is there. All the crayon for painting and drawing colorful things are there. My father said, you won't understand now, but I'm transferring you out of this school to that school. Praise the Lord, I was transferred. And I came to a real school. If I wasn't transferred, you will never have known me. I will never have known you. It's the transfer of that time that got me to where I am now. If you are not transferred out of that cage where you are now, heaven will never know you. You will never know joy. You will never know happiness. You will never know abundant life, a better life. Praise the Lord, your transfer has come. Out of sin to the Savior. Out of the abated, abort, aborted life to abundant life tonight. Out of sorrow into joy. Out of bad, bad things into good, good things. Because they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Are you coming? I said, are you coming to Christ? Remember, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for you. He'll take your guilt away. He'll take your sorrow away. And then he'll transfer you out of darkness to his marvelous light. He's calling you now. And you will respond 
is calling you and you will come point number three now we're looking at his call to the abounding life his call to the abounding life abounding life has many composite members <coughs> It's calling you to salvation. It's calling you to healing. It's calling you to deliverance. It's calling you to prosperity. It's calling you to a joyful, successful life. He, that's what he calls the abundant life. For your soul, for your spirit, for your body, for your education, for your progress, for life in entirety. He calls you. Thank God you're welcome. I say thank God you're welcome. When Christ called the blind man, he received a sight. When Christ called the sinner, because he said, I came to call sinners to repentance, he received salvation when the poor is called by the Lord. He receives a joyful life provided for sufficient to meet all his needs and when Christ calls he saves he heals he delivers he protects he gives the supernatural to everyone that responds to that call his call to the abounding life uh, look at this Matthew chapter 11 I'm reading from verse 28 Matthew 11 verse 28 come unto me come unto me he didn't say come unto Peter come unto John Come unto Saint Augustine. No. He didn't say come unto the priest. Or come unto Mary. No. Christ is the only savior. Christ is the healer. And thank God, the healer is in the house. And therefore, he says, you want salvation? You want happy life? Victorious life? You want freedom? And you want miracle? You want the power that will hold you up to the abounding life? Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest i will give you restoration restoration to the original life god wanted for every man every woman we lost that by the fall And it says, come unto me, all ye that labor, and you are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This is the faithful saying, worthy of all acceptation, that all the restlessness in our lives, 
he will take away and he give you rest abundant life tonight eternal life tonight righteous life tonight forgiveness and freedom tonight your time has come look at verse 29 there take my yoke upon you when we were in the cage we had the yoke of the one that put us in the cage he says remove that yoke all the covenant you made with that evil society renounce that yoke the habit of sinfulness break that yoke come out of that turn away from your sin repent of every form of evil and then take his yoke upon you and learn of me there's a lot you need to learn of christ that's why tonight is not the final night for you you have life tonight eternal life tonight salvation tonight abundant life tonight and then you now continue to learn of christ it says for your meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your souls everyone that comes there's a restoration there's a rest there is the righteousness that he gives a redemption that he gives and he said as you come you'll not be searching and searching and searching you'll find rest restoration redemption unto your souls and then and then in verse 30 for my yoke is easy it's when you try to live the life of abundant life without having the grace of God it becomes irksome difficult but when you have Christ the yoke breaker in your life the one that sets free the one that gives you salvation and gives you restoration when you have that Christ in you my yoke is easy and my body is light the Lord is calling you I said the Lord is calling you I said the Lord is calling you and tonight you are going to have new life tonight you are going to have total freedom tonight you are going to have salvation and of course you are going to have healing you are going to have miracle as you come as you come they will do it for you amen look at first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 24 First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. He has provided salvation. And is calling you to salvation. Faithful is he that calleth you, calleth you, calleth you, is calling you right now, who also will do it. It's calling you to a better life, a higher life, a productive life. It's calling you 
to that abundant eternal life and faithfully see that calleth you who also will do it you hate that useless life of the past and then you hate all the dwindling life abated aborted life of the past see i want the life that comes from christ directly i want the life that comes from his death from calvary and now he grants me that free life forgiven life new life i want that I'm faithful, faithful yesterday, faithful today, faithful tomorrow. His name is Amen. I'm faithful. I'm faithful. You see that call at you. Who also will do it. He's calling you now. You're welcome. And as you come, it will provide that life for you now. It'll turn your life around. You will never be the same again. A change will come. A transformation will come. As you come now. As you come now reject darkness come to the light reject your sin come to the savior reject evil and come to the lord tonight he will do it amen amen for you Amen for everyone. The Lord will do it now. It's, it's bowed, it's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. You have heard is calling you. Your life in the past till today has been a an aborted life, a baited life. The Lord has come to you, providing abundant, abounding life for you. And then he invites you and he says, come. And as you come, salvation will come to you today. You are receiving Christ as your personal Savior now. And anywhere you are, in front of me here, or somewhere over there, online, any country, every country, you've heard is calling you. You raise up your hand. You are saying, I want that abundant life. I want that new life. I want the life of Christ in me. Raise up that hand and say, Yes, Lord, I'm here. Abundant life. Abundant life. He said, Come unto me. All ye who labor on a heavy lady. And I will give you rest. Anywhere, raise up that hand. And come into that life right now. A change will happen. A transformation will happen. The joy of salvation will come to you. And the peace of God will reign in your heart. If you are raising up your hand. God bless you there. God bless you there. God bless you there. You're raising up your hand. You stand up. You identify yourself with the hand raised, standing up. 
Thank you, thank you. Quickly, quickly, stand up. If you are raising up your hand, you want life, eternal life, you want life, forgiven life, you want life, a life that is set free. A boy, a girl, a man, a woman, a church man, a church woman with a Christian name. Just raise up your hand and stand up. And then that abundant life is coming. As we're standing up, open your mouth and tell the Lord. And say, Lord, I come. Very simple. I come. I come out of Babylon. I come out of my sin. I come out of all evil. I repent. I turn. I will not go back to those things anymore. And I come to Christ my Savior. I come to Christ. He is my Lord from now on. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Faithfully see that call it you who also will do it. You'll give that eternal life now. You'll give that salvation now. I will give you rest. I'm going to pray with you now. Keep on standing up. As we pray. And you make this your prayer. Heavenly Father, we well, thank you for calling everyone. And everyone who responds, who comes to Christ, you will not push away or send away. So Lord, I pray that all these who have come, and they come for new life in Christ. And they come for salvation in Christ. They come for rest and restoration through Christ. Lord, forgive their sins. Change their lives. Turn them around. And give them transformation. That the past life will be forgiven and forgotten. And the new life that you have given will be visible in every life in Jesus' name. Give them the grace. Give them the strength to now live in newness of life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Keep on standing. The counselors are there. They want to put it on record that today you received eternal life, salvation, abundant life through Christ. We call on a national overseer in Togo here to lead us in this session of counseling. Don't go home yet. I'll come back to pray for your healing. Today is the date of your miracle and healing. You are welcome into the family of God. The counselor are with you there. You will relieve the sleep from them and you, you feel it. 
You will put your name. Uh, you put it in capital letters so that we can read it very well. You put no, your phone number. You fill it according to what is written there. You just fill it. There are places you will just tick it. Do it quickly. The counselors, please help them. You are now a member of the family of God. Do it quickly. Counselors, please help them. At the far, far back. To the French class everywhere. Counselor, please, if you finish, you let me know. You just make sign, then we know. Those who are online, you will see the number on your screen. You click that number and then you will feel the sleep online. You submit they sleep to the supervisors. No, the counselor will submit to the supervisors. You can do quick so that the pastor will come and pray for the sick. Counselors, do quick, do quick, be fast. At my right, have you finished? If you are finished, can you can you let me know? Just shake your flag there, then let me know. Okay. I'm 
in the middle here. Have you finished? Hurry up, hurry up. If I didn't, you are At the far back, you go to the far back. Help them, help them quickly. At my left, can you wave your this is I see? Maybe Counselor, we are waiting. You feel the paper. Those that cannot feel it, help them to feel it. You feel it properly. It will help us to come to you later and help you. For you to grow. Yes, let me know if you are finished. In the French class, We are still waiting. You submit the sleep to the supervisor. You don't go home with it. Feel it, feel it quickly. Counselor, help them. They should write their phone number. Very important. If uh, you finish, you stay with them very soon. Pastor is coming to pray. 
You stay with the people that are sick. Counselor, we are waiting. Do quick. Go to the far back. Go to the French class. Listen to me very well. Tomorrow here, those who are giving their life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you are now born again. Tomorrow afternoon, two o'clock, here, we have lunch with Christ. Launch with Jesus Christ. Here on this, uh, this place. All that have given their life to Lord Jesus Christ, you come here tomorrow, two o'clock. For lunch with Jesus Christ. Yes, counselor, we are still waiting. Have you finished? Have you finished? Yes, over there is finished. Uh, okay, at the back is finished. What of here? At my left hand, it's finished? It's okay. Now, uh, you will still be praying. Pastor is coming now. Stay with the people that are sick. Stay with them. You can stand up. Pastor is coming to pray for you now. Praise the Lord. Your time for healing and miracle, that time has now come. He calls you into a miracle. Calls you into healing. He calls you into the manifestation of his power. Faithfully see that calleth you. Who also will do it. You don't need to wait for another person. You catch your miracle, your healing, when you hear that final amen. If you are lame, you just rise up, you begin to walk. If you are blind, you open your eyes, you will see. 
any problem you have the Lord is by your side taking that problem away right now final amen finish raise up, raise up one hand and lay the other hand where you have the challenge you will do it are you ready we are praying now lay your hand where you have the challenge and raise up the other hand father our God the father of our Lord Jesus Christ we know you are here already Lord Jesus our savior our healer we know that you are here with all your power Holy Spirit with power divine we know you are right there by everyone here and online we're asking Lord that that power that never fails will touch transform heal deliver everyone now in Jesus name Lord, let there be manifestation of your power. A performance of your promise. You are the giver. We are the receivers. Let everyone receive right now in Jesus' name. That pain in your body, I command, come out in Jesus name every form of sickness the pile you're healed sleepless nights you're healed high blood pressure healed tuberculosis healed nightmares evil spirits tormenting your head and your life be delivered in jesus name <laughs> cancer be healed in jesus name all those cancer cells dry up now in jesus name hiv aids be healed in jesus name ulcer be healed in jesus name and that hernia be removed right now in jesus name The breathing problem, you are healed in Jesus' name. Insanity and madness, I command that evil spirit, come out in Jesus' name. Elephantiasis or any other swelling in your body. I take authority over you. Be healed in Jesus' name. Any curse that have been following you, I break that yoke, I stop that curse. You are delivered in Jesus' name. Lord, manifest your faithfulness to everyone right now. Healing for everyone. Deliverance for everyone. Miracles for everyone. You are faithful God. You will do it. You have done it. We have received. Lord, touch 
everyone with a touch of miracle. It is done. It is done. You are healed. You are delivered. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Check up yourself now. Check up, check up yourself. Don't wait for another person. Everyone who accepts the faithful saying always receives a miracle. Check up. And when you see the miracle, let there be a shout of joy. 